Okay, we're going to do something different this time. Uh, we're not going to do my old beetle right now, but uh, I have this one here. Uh, this is a good friend of mine, 69. It's uh, pretty much a bone stock 1500 single port. And we're going to do a valve adjustment on this. So bear with me if the lighting's a little off, but that's something that if you do own a Beetle and it's got uh, never been retrofitted with uh, hydraulic lifters, it's something you should be able to do besides doing an oil change if you own one of these. It's pretty much very simple, very straightforward. The first thing you need to do is to make sure that the car has sat so the engine is stone cold. You want it stone cold, and then depending on which model you have, if you have a 36 horse, a 1200 40 horse, or a 1300, a 1500, or 1600, you're going to need to know what your valve lash is going to be with a set of feeler gauges. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to use the feeler gauges to set your valve lash. All right, so. This engine is a 1500 single port. It doesn't have the long studs on the heads, so we're going to be using. It's supposed to be set at 6,000 valve lash, but my valves, my, uh, I know you can't see it, it's pretty fuzzy, but my feeler gauges don't have that. Um, the ones that work do, um, but we're going to set it at 7,000, which a little bit looser is a lot better than a little bit tighter on these because you can burn an exhaust valve pretty easy on one of these if you don't have the valves adjusted properly and it's one of the basic things you should be able to do to your beetle so let's get the distributor cap taken off we'll get the engine rotated to number one we'll get the valve covers off and I'll be right back and I'll show you what to do okay now there is a notch here right there and you line basically what you're going to do is you're going to line this notch and get the light here. Here's a notch right here. You want that lined up with your case halves, which is right here. That's your case halves. That's your, that's your reference point. And you want your distributor. There's a notch here. You want the rotor pointed to that notch and your timing mark set up. So basically, your engine is on firing on number one. So then you take and you're going to pop your valve covers off and I'll show you on this uh, bare 36 horse block over here. You have cylinder one, cylinder two over here, back here is cylinder three, and over here, right here, is four. And your firing order, when the engine's spinning, is one four three two. So as the engine spins, one four three two. Now, when you do this, you set it up on number one. You get your feeler gauge, and basically, what you're going to do, let me get the light up here, so you can see what I'm doing. We're back here by the tire. If I can get the light to cooperate with me. I know it's hard to see. I had it perfect before. Basically what you're going to do... It up against the tire. You're going to take your feeler gauge. This is your valve train with the valve covers off. And you want to get the feeler gauge in between, like that. Move the light so you can see. You want the feeler gauge in there, like that. And you're going to do that on the intake, which that is the exhaust valve 
We're going to do it to the next one on the intake. So you're going to take that out, which you run that in there, make sure that it just drags a little bit, which it does, which is good, and you go on to the next one. Which it drags a little bit, that's good. So, cylinder one's good. Now, what do you do next? Well, to get to number two, since it's one, four, three, two, if you spin the engine backwards, 180. So you get your wrench up here. I usually put it on the on the fan or on the generator, alternator or whatever one you have and you spin it backwards and there, I have the pulley marked already 180 degrees back backwards get that lined up there now you're on cylinder number two because if you spin it backwards it'll go one two three four and you come down here and if you take to make sure if you take and you wiggle the valves they should be loose whereas this one you only have one and that one's tight these two are loose so these are the next two that you do so you grab your feeler gauge and you check this one get it up in there And it's a skosh tight. But since it's at six thousandths, let me set the camera down here a second. If you take your four thousandths or, or five thousandths one out, since we're shooting for six. Hang on one second.